You can't succeed in anything that you are not diligent about. In Proverbs 22, 29, he says, Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He says, He will stand before kings and not before men. men. Most of us have great ideas, great talents, great gifts, but we are haphazard about it. We never sit down, pay attention to details, and tenaciously follow through with the requirements of those gifts and those ideas until they come to pass. That's why we keep struggling. People see people who succeed and they just start talking nonsense. Say, God has helped this person. Who is God not helping? If God is not helping you, will you survive? God is helping all of us. The Bible says he's not a favorite of men. He is favorably disposed to everybody. Everybody is where they are today based on the diligence they've given to the assignment God has given to them. I was with Bishop David Oedepo's secretary when they came to Abuja. And we were talking, talked until the program was over. They left Abuja to the airport at about 9 o'clock. And I told him, ah, we can't talk today again since you will rest when you get back home. He looked at the time. He said, the day is still young. That's 9 o'clock. They landed Ota at 12 midnight and they went straight to work. And they walked till 2 a.m. And when they finished, the next day, they must all be in church by 5 a.m. for early morning due. How do you close by 2 a.m. and resume work by 5 a.m.? You now say, they, they, it's anointing. You don't know that the results you see are born out of diligence, doggedness, discipline, focus, and commitment. This is why the lazy fail. I can tell you that most of the men that became nothing in life are the most gifted men. Why rising up, they perched around word of knowledge, perched around healing, perched around prophecy. And they never paid attention to the diligent requirements of their call. They will never sit down to read the Bible. They will never take time to fast. They will never go out on evangelism. They wake up, have one or two invitations, and they feel because they prophesy the word will come to them. You are joking. Up till last week, Bishop Oedeko went to the street for evangelism. That's why living faith is where it is. I heard him talking last year. He said his evangelism team, not the church, his own evangelism team won 8,400 souls. That's a general overseer who has been in ministry for more than 40 years. It's called diligence. The same way they went to the street 40 years ago, that's how they are still going to the street. The church is not big because the man is anointed. Yes, he's anointed. But there are rigors that go under the assignment that you don't know. And then you are a businessman. You stroll to shop around 10. All your customers came and left. You say, don't worry. I'm the only person that sells spare part here. The next spare part seller will come next week. In fact, your laxity is what will open his eyes. That this spare part business, there's a vacuum. And that's why most people can't stand competition. But in the business world, brother, there's a lot of competition. That's why you need a lot of diligence to man your own gate. Whether you are in ministry, whether you are in the academia, whether you are in the market, there's got to be diligence at the foundation of what you do. You are a video editor and you have not sat on YouTube to watch at least 100 videos about editing. Every day you edit, you write name, the name is shaking like this on the video. <laughs> You say you are a tailor. You need to go and buy an Italian suit. You will lose the suit. Cut according to how it was cut. And sew it until you master how to sew Italian suit. People will no, need, no longer struggle to import. They will look for you. Who told you things happen by chance? No impartation can impart that. It takes diligent commitment. That thing you are doing, you need a thousand and one inspiration that somebody else does not have. That's what sets you apart in that corridor. And so you will pay the price to seek. He said, whoever lacketh wisdom shall ask of him that giveth liberally and unbraided not. So there are many times when for two weeks you need to sit down and ask God, Lord, what wisdom do I need in this internet business? I'm a blogger. How come all my videos are just 2K views? How do I make it 100K view? And you are praying for two weeks to know how your videos can grow from 2k view to 100k. That's a very spiritual prayer. Because your job is blogging. You may be praying. And while you are praying, 
Your question is, how do I expand this pair path business? I've been here for 10 years. I can't remain like this. You have encompassed one mountain for too long. When light breaks out, you will break forth. You are a graphic designer. The graphic design you did last week is almost identical with the one you did in 2012. And you say, oh man, we are moving. We are moving. You are not moving. And if you are actually moving, then you are going backward. <laughs> You've got to grow in wisdom. And many times to grow in wisdom, it takes prizes. Sometimes you stay alone for weeks in order to tap into inspiration. Sometimes you need to travel somewhere and hear somebody who has gone ahead of you in that field so that you can tap into something. It's the same song you are singing that somebody else is singing in Wembley Stadium. Throughout last week, I sat with Bishop David Oedeko. What are the secrets of church growth? I want to make more impact. What are you doing? Where you are is a forest. People are paying terrible prices to come and sit down there. There's something you know. And I'm not listening to the message because I want to preach it. I want to enter into what he knows. You are a leader. You are a politician. And you can't deliver a speech for 15 minutes. They wake you up every day. You are, you, you are reading. Uh, uh, okay, um, uh, yes. Um, sorry. I beg your pardon. Uh, uh, sorry. One minute. Two minutes. You are trying to read for five minutes. I beg your pardon. Appear ten times in a five minute speech. Because even the letter you, could, you didn't write it. I saw one on Channels TV. M, M, M. M, M, M became a trend. Because of the kind of politicians we have in Nigeria. How come you have not registered under the mentorship program of Plo Lumumba? The wisest people in, in, in Africa. And hear them talk to open your mind. Not in government, but he can analyze the problem of every African country. And when he's talking... It's like a song. It's singing into your ears. How come you've not sat under such men to buy the wisdom they have? And you think you will wake up and become successful. That's why our own idea of leadership is, 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 to, is to cut corners. Because we don't have what it takes. Somebody is a president of a country. He doesn't know the problem of that country. You want to address your own country. You want to address your own state. On live television, you are reading on paper. What is the hope of the state? I was listening to Nana Kufo, the president of Ghana, addressing United Nations. I said, this is a president. I don't need to be a Ghanaian. I was impressed. When he was talking, he could match any, any president from any nation. While the Kenyan crisis was happening, I saw the delegation, the Ukrainian crisis, the delegation from Kenya, when the guy spoke, the speech of two minutes went viral. The wisdom he communicated, even the UN, the people needed to check dictionaries to, to follow him. You are not backward because you are in Africa. You are backward because you have not bought enough wisdom. You can command the attention of the world from Africa. Did you not hear about Nelson Mandela? How come you are a leader and you don't have five mentors? Man, 10 years ago, I can, I can speak the tongues of Bishop Oedipo. I'm not saying speak in tongues like him. I chewed, I chewed the man until I can speak the same tongues that he spoke in messages. I can score his messages. If he start preaching anyone, I will be saying what he will say next. Because the area where you are going, you will follow the people. God told me I will start crusade now. Every crusade Dr. Paul goes to, I'm, I'm finding out what is going on here? What is happening here? You've got to buy wisdom to be ahead in life. And whichever field God has called you to, you've got to have trailblazers that inspire you. And as they are inspiring you, they are open you, opening you up to wisdom. And the point will come, you will now begin to pray and ask God for light to take you ahead. We are in an era where messages are free. That's why people took messages for granted. I used to buy Pastor Chris's messages with my pocket money as a student. As an LYC student, I got messages over 300 with money. 
God has opened up a new era now. You scroll on Facebook, there are messages and people can't hear. If you bought one CD played for 700 naira, even you know that every sentence in that message, you must know it. <laughs> if I was into car business, by now I would have, I would have met Cosmos Maduka. It's not even prayer point. We would have sat down and talked. I will pursue you doggedly. You can't avoid me. Because I must carry, I must catch what you have before you leave here. Who told you we will permit you to go to the grave with that wealth? We will take every bit of it by hearing what you say, learning your secrets and receiving impartation from you. It's not only prophets and apostles that impart people. If you are a businessman, better look for godly businessmen. Let them lay hands on you. The spirit they carry will be transferred. Listen to them. Sit on them. Don't only hear an apostle whose emphasis is ministry. God has sent you to business. If you hear that this man is in any business seminar, go and download the message. Some of you, your playlists have to change. Because you are a businessman, you need to find out the Christian businessmen. Hear everything they have said. Find out their secret and connect to what they have. You've got to buy wisdom. Too many people lack wisdom. That's why we don't make progress. You want to prosper? Wisdom must become a weapon that you wield at will. And the last test you must pass is the test of priesthood. Wherever you are walking, you must have a mobile altar. Priesthood is not for prophets, evangelists, and apostles. Priesthood is for every believer. God said, I have made you a nation of kings and priests. In Revelation chapter 1 verse 6, he said he washed us in his blood and made us kings and priests. All of us are priests. And so you can be a lawyer, you can be a marketer, you can be a blogger. Whatever it is you are, if you want to succeed, ensure that your altar is alive. Why? Because this test will ensure your preservation. Because you can be prospering and your altar is weak, you will be cut off overnight. That's why many people at the prime of their career, that's when they are cut off. They got everything right except priesthood. And the day God wants to exhort them, that's the day they are cut off. I met a young man six years ago, a very clean footballer, powerful midfielder. They had concluded about his signing everything the night he was supposed to travel he slept the night before and somebody came in the dream held his hand and pulled this bone out his hand became like this uh, and this is not fairy tale somebody held his hand pulled the hand out of joint till today they've not been able to fix that hand if you see him his bone the bone is like this and he cannot run at all. He can't even try it. And a career that would have been an outstanding career shut down. Because every other thing was kept. Priesthood was lacking. That's why whatever it is you do, you must learn to pray for yourself. If you don't pray for yourself, some of the intercessors that will call you around 2 a.m. and say we are praying for you is a lie. If I'm praying for you, how will I be sending messages at the same time? The moment he sent that text, he slept. Hoping that by coincidence, that thing will happen. And when it happens and you come, you say, that time I sent you that message, I was on a mountain. My sisters used to have one intercessor. Around 1 a.m., he will send message. He will say, he sent this message from the mountain. I told them, this man is a scam. If you have bodies to climb the mountain, you will leave your phone at home. Who carries his phone to the mountain and around 2 a.m. he's sending messages. He went there for holiday. It's not intercession. <laughs> Thank God for people praying for you. Bro, your knee must hit the ground. You are the first prophet over your life. And if you don't pray for yourself, anything that happens to you, bear it. Because your laxity on the altar, you must recompense from it by the surprises of life. That's why we are happy for all who pray for us. Those who have burdens to pray for us. But every one of us pray our way through life. 
because a day will come when everybody will have legitimate needs to pay attention to and when that day come make sure you don't become porous because your intercessors got busy if people are praying for you it's an added advantage you must be the first priest over your life every prophetic word that comes to you should be a confirmation of what God told you because you too are contending for your destiny don't leave your destiny in the hands of another person if you have the Holy Spirit you can pray and even if you don't know what to pray for as you ought to the Bible already captured it pray until you grow if you have somebody praying and imparting you that's an advantage but beyond that impartation you will excel that's why some of the wealthiest men in the world are godless because there's a residual grace already in nature to prosper you all you need to do is to align through working with your hand and cooperating with some of these tests that God puts in nature to create balance in the operations of nature.